Hey guys, so I wanted to watch these videos in their entirety together. So I believe there are two meta zoo videos. There might be more, I'm not sure, but there's at least two meta zoo videos. And you have to watch them together because if you watch them separately, it might not really make sense, right? And one part of the video, Mike is giving Rudy free cards. I believe there are sample packs and first edition boxes, Kickstarter boxes, and so on. These are quite valuable cards. Um, these are not cheap cards in any aspect. They're basically the chase of the chase, right? I mean, when you talk about the, the what cards you would want at the time the video was made, these would be the cards. And then they have this Q&A discussion. Uh, a lot of the questions are probably vetted. I would imagine for a new card game, people would be more skeptical than they were. But uh, who knows, right? Uh, who knows? But it does, I would think that it would be vetted. Um, I think that that would make sense to me. But Maybe they were not vetted and they were just questions that Mike was really good at answering because he had answered them a few times. I really want to figure out, is this actually a scam? And I looked at the initial video. Uh, I can tell you it was never supposed to be a card game. The running idea right now is something kind of interesting to me at least. The running idea is that this was initially supposed to be a scam, but later on they made so much money, they decided just to actually make a product. That would be very much in aligned with um, what I believe. It seemed like this initial discussion, even if you read the comments from two to three years ago, when the discussion came out, people were absolutely um, upset at this particular thing and they were already calling it a scam they were already saying you know what um, this doesn't sound right to me uh, there's a lot of questions here and it sounds like a game it sounds like a game that people are not going to play and it sounds like a game that people are going to push as collectible but in reality may not be collectible so that's what it sounds like. Um, that's what I believe it was. Uh, I believe it was something where they were pushing MetaZoo. And it was more or less a crypto rug pull. But then something weird happened and it became successful. And they said, you know, how much more can we take this? And the answer was, yeah, we can take it really far. Uh, let's take it as far as we can go, right? Um why not? And that's what has happened with MetaZoo. So this conversation these two individuals are having isn't a conversation between Richard Garfield and a player. It's not a conversation between Richard Garfield and Mike Mark Justice or even Mike Long, who are known cheaters, or you know John Finkel. Right? This is not the best MetaZoo player talking to Richard Garfield about creating a game. This is a person who sells boxes at volume to a Patreon group. And this is a person who I, I don't, I would be surprised if this guy's not into cryptid, crypto, crypto, not cryptid, crypto. Um, there's a lot of, you know, let's build a game and, and let's figure out how it's going to work. And there's none of that stuff going on. There's, Let's try to make it as collectible as possible and then sell this to our customers, right? That's, that's what the objective is. The objective is not to build a sustainable game. Now, in hindsight, you might say hindsight is always, uh, you know, it's always 2020, right? But I think there were definitely clues in these two interviews, just the way that Mike first introduces the game to Alpha Investments by giving him the most valuable things, which again, costs him nothing. I've heard that he prints them in China and that the printer in China is not getting paid and they're getting, and then supposedly there's a guy called Bailey and the Bailey individual is 
going to head off to China and, and buy the Hello Kitty pink boxes or something like that. How much of this is true? Un unknown. But the print quality is low enough that I wouldn't put it past him to actually have it done in China. And then, you know, like once the pay, once you're not getting payment, how is, how is that going to go, right? Like, how is that going to go with uh, the Chinese printer shop? Is, or they're probably just happy. They, they probably want to get some money out of it, right? Uh, the way that MetaZoo has gone, it seems like no one's getting any money out of MetaZoo. So at least the Chinese printer shop is like, hey, well, we, we got to get paid, man. So then this American comes over and he's going to bring a bag of cash. They probably say, yeah, take these Hello Kitty cards. They don't do us any good. Throw them on like a boat and then send the pallets to America. From the very get-go, this was very sketchy, right? Like, it clearly is not biased. Now, the question, we will never know from Rudy if he, he got paid cash to do this interview. Um, we will never know from Rudy if... Uh, but I do know that he got paid in these cards, and that was the building of the relationship. And everyone knows that. That's the building of that relationship was being paid in cards. And that is very important to understand that this guy basically was printing money, and he was using that money to buy influencers from Steve Aoki to Alpha Investments to other people online. So when you print a card and the card is only a few dollars, right? To that's the the cost of printing it. Then why not give it to uh, why not give it to the individuals like Alpha Investments because it costs you nothing, and he's going to promote it. And you have a printing company in China making these cards. When I was talking to China now again. Take your grain of salt. It was a long time ago, but the Chinese counterfeiters were making magic cards that were pretty close for almost uh, one cent a card or half a cent a card. They could make a very, very quality Tamagoyf at that time. So what is the reality of this is the reality was everyone just kind of got bought. I I'm not going to make it any other... I'm not going to make it um, any... I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They got paid off in product. And then maybe cash. We, we don't know about cash, but they absolutely got paid off in product. And I think that is very, very akin to why I believe this was a pump. Because it's no different than Crypto Zoo, the friends and family token. It's no different from FTX where Kevin O'Leary got paid in cash and supposedly lost most of it in product. In uh, the coins, um, a lot of these influencers, you know, are save the kids. I mean, you could go down to crypto line. This thing had the shakings from the very get go of, hey, let me present you a big gift. At one time, according to Rudy himself, each of those boxes on the table was like ten thousand dollars, and he got sample packs, and I'm sure he's received other things as well. Well, that's the beginning of a relationship is a gift, if you will. In some countries, we would call it a bribe, right? If this was in China and we want to you know, discriminate their system, we would be like, oh, it's a bribe. But in America, we call it a gift. Hi, <laughs> guys.